So join me in welcoming, if you would please, uh, for Mystery Vibe, Stephanie. much for that wonderful introduction and uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's such an honor to be here. Great to have met so many of you and I look forward to meeting those of you I haven't yet a little bit later today. But let me start off today with a question for you guys. What was the most important thing you learned about sex before you did it? Wear a condom, maybe. Something about pregnancy or STI, sexually transmitted infection. If you had good sex education, perhaps you learned about the importance of consent or something about love and relationships. But how many of you learned about pleasure? That sex, no matter how you have it, should actually be a fun, kind of enjoyable thing. It's weird because sex and masturbation are as old as humanity in itself. But it's only now that culture and society are starting to talk about sex and pleasure. Sex education often focuses on what goes where and when, or things like pregnancy and STI. We call this the plumbing and prevention model. It gives you all the basic ingredients that you need to avoid complete and total disaster, but it doesn't really give you anything to actually aspire to. And as we get older, sex advice in the media often focuses on things like tips and advice, very generic and treat sex as if it's a problem that needs to be solved, without talking about the broader, holistic benefits of actually having a really good time. And those benefits are many. If you just look at the science, for example, the benefits of having great, fulfilling sex. One, it's good exercise. Improved immune system, better heart health, lower blood pressure. It may even reduce the risk of certain cancers. You get improved sleep, stress relief, can sometimes even provide pain relief, chronic pain. And of course, increased intimacy and better relationships. And this is summed up perfectly in this quote. To feel aroused is to feel alive. Having great sex is like taking in huge lungfuls of fresh air, essential to your body, essential to your health, and completely essential to your life. So three years ago, when we first started Mystery Vibe, we looked at some of the deep underlying trends that were really affecting consumer behavior. And that research I could talk about for hours on end, but I will draw three quick uh, trends from that just to briefly mention to you guys. The first being in wellness. We've seen this meteoric rise in the concept of health and wellness. And you see that through things like fitness trackers or fashion and athletic wear or the rise in mindfulness and meditation. And this points towards a key trend that we are starting to become much more aware of and care about our physical and our mental health. Secondly, sexual empowerment. We are starting to talk much more openly about sex and pleasure. And not just celebrities. Like each one of those people has spoken very openly in the media about the fact that they've bought or enjoy uh, sexual products. But also more broadly in life. And thirdly, gender. We are redefining gender and its social boundaries, what it means to be a man or a woman or different genders. And we're starting to see a rise in things like non-gendered clothing, unisex clothing. We used to see, especially in our industry, products that were designed specifically for men, products that were designed specifically for women. But there is now this huge demand for something that's a bit different. And people are no longer happy to uh, take instructions. They want to explore things for themselves and redefine what it is to be human for them. So the thread drawing all of that research together was that the world is changing very quickly and we're becoming much more diverse and also a lot more personalized when we're talking about some of these issues. But I know some of you uh, might see the social trends and you're like, yeah, okay, that's all well and good. But give me some numbers. Give me something that I can really see, some concrete evidence. And a recent piece of research uh, came up with some quite interesting numbers that I thought I'd share with you today. 23%, fairly modest number. But if you consider that that's the percentage of adults globally 
who have used a sex toy at some point in their lives, that number seems a little bit bigger. That's almost one in four people. And if we break that number down, 44%. That's the number of women aged between 18 and 60 who, who have used a sexual product in their life. 20% for the men. I'm sorry, men, but women are ahead of you. And let me tell you, they're having a lot of fun. And all this adds up to this rather large number on screen, um, $15 billion. And that was the size of the sex toy market in 2011. Huge number, dominated by retailers who operate within the sexual products market. But this number completely pales in comparison to this number, $50 billion annually, which is the projected size of the sex toy market in 2020. And this is probably even a little bit conservative. Some people are uh, projecting a much bigger size of the market. But for many people, the retail experience is often poor. You have to go down some dark alley in some dodgy part of town. Uh, you might feel intimidated or potentially embarrassed. It's not a great place to, and it's not a great experience. And as we focus more and more on experiences, and especially young people, millennials, uh, value experience much more than buying loads and loads of things, this is something we need to think about. And as the gentleman was earlier talking about, things are changing. And one of the uh, biggest indicators of this is Amazon now stocks over 60,000 adult products. And they are the largest seller globally of sex toys. And where Amazon goes, other retailers will surely follow. And we're starting to see this now, with sex toys stocked, for example, in Selfridges in London. So what does this all mean? Why am I here um, talking to you guys about this topic? Why is it important? Well, eight years ago, we came across uh, what we thought was a real problem. And that was a problem that technology was taking over the bedroom. You take your laptop, you take your phone, you leave it on the bedside table. You get this constant flurry of texts, notifications, emails into your inbox. And it fi you find it much harder to switch off from your busy work life and switch on when it comes to sex and pleasure. And if we can play the video, please. teamed up with uh, Seymour Powell, who are an incredible industrial design expert, to completely reinvent and redesign the sex toy. And we thought, if Apple were to make a sex toy, what would they do? How would they do it? What would it look like? What would it feel like? And what we decided that we wanted to do is create something that was flexible. And this is what, exactly what we did. We came up with Crescendo, which is a body-adapting, flexible vibrator for men, for women, for couples of any orientation. And we put the best tech that we could find, the best tech that existed elsewhere, and we moved it into this industry. And then beyond going for just a simple product, we decided that we wanted to really change perception. So we aimed to completely change the way that the media was talking about sex, and we did it, with features in places like The Guardian, Bustle, Wired, Wall Street Journal, Glamour, Cosmopolitan. And most recently, uh, one of the very first sex toys to be featured in a BBC documentary. But talking isn't enough these days. Um, and we've also been very lucky to have been featured um, as a great company in many awards and had many recognitions from being featured by Virgin as a showcase company in their Voom 2016 export awards to being nominated as the best hardware startup in Europe at the Europas, and of course, gaining customers in only over 50 countries in less than two years. So as my time comes to a close uh, today, I wanted to leave you with a quote. Um, we are not thinking beings that feel. We are feeling beings that think. And we think this is an incredibly important uh, aspect of human life and I look forward to discussing this with you and seeing how this might apply to your region, to your market. Uh, you'll find us in the main exhibition hall and also at the party this evening. Come up and have a chat with us. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming to listen. Stephanie, thank you very much. Thank you.